Hello, Clive Tompkins reporting for the Finance News Network. Joining me from Toro Energy is Managing Director, Dr. Vanessa Guthrie. Vanessa, welcome to FNN. Thank you very much, glad to be here. Toro Energy is a uranium developer, which this week won final federal government environmental approval to develop the $269 million wholly owned uh, uranium project in Western Australia. What process occurred to get to this point? Look, Toro is very pleased and uh, welcomes the Minister's decision, the Federal Government Minister's decision this week, to allow Waluna Uranium Project to now proceed. It, it comes after a three and a half year environmental assessment process, which included four opportunities for the public to comment, and uh, follows on from the State Government in Western Australia's approval, which was received last October. It really now paves the way for the Waluna project to become the first uranium mine in Western Australia and the sixth uranium producer across Australia. Thanks. And what's the significance of the announcement for the Waluna uranium project itself? Well, this means that uh, Toro can now, with our potential investment partners, our strategic partners, actually uh, progress forwards on uh, commercial terms to take uh, Waluna into project funding status and then with a view to achieving a final board approval for decision to construct by the end of the year. And which deposit will drive Toro's output and when are you forecasting maiden production will occur? Well, the uh, Waluna project that is now approved is two deposits, the Centipede and Lakeway deposit. The first deposit to be developed will be Centipede and that is adjacent to the processing plant and it is where we will uh, put the mine tailings back in, in ground. So. Uh, Centipede is first. Uh, we anticipate uh, first production by the end of 2015. Thanks, Vanessa. So what's your timeline for reaching production by the end of 2015? And what's next on Toro's priority list? Well, the first priority now for uh, Toro is to secure a funding partner. Uh, and that uh, we've had very encouraging discussions over the last 18 months with uh, potential partners, mainly from uh, Asian utilities and Asian trading houses out of Japan, uh, Korea and China, but also with some partners in the US. So our key priority now is to fund the project. Uh, we have some uh, in infrastructure engineering and cost estimate work to complete, and that will take us really to bankable stage by the end of this year so we can achieve that first production target in by the end of 2015. Now to financing. Can you talk us through your economic modelling for Waluna and your plans for commercial financing arrangements? Well, the project has really been uh, the waiting for the federal approval so that we can secure um, with certainty an investment partner. What we would uh, like to do and propose to do with that strategic partner is a mixture of debt and equity. The strategic partner is really motivated more by security of supply into the nuclear power facilities rather than a direct economic return. Of course, it's a combination of both. Those partners look to have um, <clears throat> a combination of equity and a long-term offtake contract, which uh, secures the product to them. So our economic model looks at uh, Toro equity, a joint venture partner equi equity with an offtake contract arranged and then a debt facility to fund the project as well. We would expect to retain some offtake contract for ourselves and most of that will be in long-term contracts with a long-term secured price. That means we will have uh, some exposure to the spot price, but of course not a, not a significant amount. Good, so how strong has interest from Asian utilities been in partnering? Uh, look, we've had significant interest over the last uh, 18 months to two years from partners, uh, potential partners in China, in Korea, and in Japan. And interestingly, even in, this is post uh, the events in Fukushima and the closure, um, progressive closure of the Japanese reactors. So the, while the sentiment on the broader global market is uh, around spot price has been driven by the events in Japan, in reality, the long-term contract prices have been very stable. And these partners have, have uh, been very interested in securing that reliability of supply from Australia, which is considered to be a, a tier one supply country. Now, Vanessa, there's been a lot of equity market focus on the short term uh, uranium spot price. How does that relate to longer term prices and your joint venture negotiations? Well, the, the short term spot price, which is really a contract within a 12 month period uh, at $42 today or thereabouts, 
uh, is really just driven by the sentiment out of Japan and the current um, arrangements in regarding inventory overhang that uh, has happened in Japan. But in reality, this is not connected to the long-term contract price, which has been very stable since uh, post Fukushima. And our joint venture agreements are really focused on securing a long-term contract price that, and the pricing point we look for is actually in the second half of this decade. So it's really a 2016 and onwards price and these contracts are 10 years long. So our joint venture partners uh, and ourselves are really looking for that 2016 and onwards price point. The current predictions uh, by independent analysts around the world say that that price and the new incentive price for mines like ours is really in the $70 per pound range, US $70 per pound range. Uh, so we, we believe that the spot price today is not really reflective of what a long-term contract and a joint venture partner will be interested in with the Waluna project. So what sort of global uranium market will Waluna's output be coming into in what is basically the second half of this decade? Well, the current uh, projections uh, by China is that they will increase their nuclear power capacity to 70 gigawatts by 2020. And India is uh, currently has 20 new reactors under construction. So the real, uh, the, the economies of China and India will really start to drive an upswing in demand in the next five to eight years, which is really the second half of this decade. That is coupled with a uh, shortage of supply that is starting to emerge as the very large projects such as uh, those in Namibia, uh, the Olympic Dam expansion here in Australia, uh, not progressing as fast as they uh, were first predicted. And also the secondary supply, uh, which is coming out of Russia, the highly enriched uranium agreement, which comes to an end at the end of this year. So we, we see a, a supply demand imbalance starting to emerge from 2015 onwards. And that's where Waluna is perfectly positioned, which has always been our strategy to be able to take advantage of a supply gap and, and at the right time in the right regulatory environment. Last question, Vanessa. Having secured the green light to progress to production, what would you like to see Toro Energy achieve by the end of this year? Look, I think we've, uh, we're very excited and very focused now on securing that project funding partner and being able to take our project through to final investment decision so we can get on and into production and really uh, nail that supply window. Vanessa Guthrie, thanks for the introduction to Toro Energy. You're very welcome. <laughs>